we're going to talk about derivatives at a point in parametric form. So let me write up the little definition that we need. A parametric curve, x equals to f of t and y equals to g of t, with a being less than or equal to t is less than or equal to b, has a derivative at t equals to t sub i if f and g both have derivatives at t equals to t sub i. So for your parametric function to have a derivative, both the x and y equations must have derivatives that also exist. We say that the curve is differentiable if it is differentiable at every t value. And we also say that we have a smooth curve when f prime and g prime are continuous and not both zero at the same time. So now we need to get into um, sort of the big thing for today, and that is slope. Now, what's slope? Slope is simply rise over run, dy over dx. Because our equations in parametric form are x equals to some function in terms of t and y equals to some other function in terms of t, our slope is going to be really thought of as dy dt over dx dt, where we can think of the differential dt as canceling out, so we just get our dy dx. So let's calculate the slope. Let's find the slope for x equals to t minus t squared, y equals to t minus t cubed. dy dx is equal to dy dt over dx dt. So we simply need to take the derivative of y with respect to time, so 1 minus 3t squared, and divide that by the derivative of x with respect to time, so 1 minus 2t. Notice that your answer for your slope is not in terms of x or y, it is in terms of t. So let that be part a. Now here's another question. When does the graph have a horizontal tangent line? So I want to know when this occurs. So we need to find the parameter t value for when it's going to have a horizontal tangent line. So horizontal tangent line means for us what? The slope is 0, dy dx equals to 0. So that means we want 1 minus 3t squared to be equal to 0. So 3t squared equals 1, t equals 2, plus or minus 1 over radical 3. We're going to do one more thing in extending past the first derivative. We are going to find the second derivative of a parametric equation. So now let's think about second derivative. How do we normally write that? d squared y dx squared, right? Basically the derivative of your first derivative. But notice it's the derivative of the first derivative with respect to x. And do you remember what our slope was written in terms of? Our slope was written in terms of t. So this is really d dx of our slope. So if we look at the example above, be 1 minus 3t squared over 1 minus 2t. Well, how do you take the derivative of something written in terms of t and take the derivative with respect to x? So that's kind of a problem here. And the mistake I do not want you guys to make is suddenly think, oh, well, that x needs to match up with my t, so I'm just going to change that to t, and then I'm going to just go ahead and use the quotient rule. You cannot do this. This is going to be incorrect. Let's think about slope again. So let's go back here and look at this. So the slope it, I'm sorry, the second derivative is the derivative of our first derivative. Now instead of me writing dy dx, let's write it in another way. How else do we usually write first derivative? Sometimes some of you guys really like writing y prime. So let's do that instead, dy prime dx. So now once it's like this, we could write dy prime dt over dx dt in a way similar to how we calculated our slope in the beginning, then this is really now derivative with respect to time of our first derivative. So this is now the 1 minus 3t squared over 1 minus 2t, and then we want to divide that by dx dt. And what is dx dt? We found that way above and dx dt is simply 1 minus 2t. That's the bottom part down here, because that was dy dt over dx dt. So in order to calculate the derivative with respect to time, now we use the quotient rule, derivative of the top times the bottom, 
minus the derivative of the bottom times the top all over the bottom squared and notice we still have that extra 1 minus 2t there. So we can end up combining these because you're dividing and then dividing again. 6t squared minus 6t plus 2 all over 1 minus 2t cubed. Remember to think of it as dy prime dx, the derivative of the first derivative with respect to x, not with respect to time t. x equals 2, negative 2 sine t, y equals to 2 cosine t. What would this be an equation for? Let's see, I want us to find dy dx, and then I want us to find the second derivative, d squared y dx squared. So let's first find dy dx. So that's going to be dy dt over dx dt. So differentiate each of those with respect to time. So that's going to give us negative 2 sine t. So I can cross out my negative 2's and then I'm going to get just tangent t. So now I need to find the second derivative. Remember to think of this as dy prime over dx. So dy prime dt over dx dt. So if we take our first derivative, which is over here on the left hand side, and plug it in for our y prime, we want to take the derivative of that with respect to time. So that's going to make it be secant squared t. And then we have to divide by dx dt. And dx dt was this whole denominator here in the beginning. So that's going to be divided by a negative 2 cosine t. So I can simplify that answer because a cosine on the bottom is the same as secant squared up on top. So that's going to be a negative 1 half secant cubed t. There's our first derivative and our second derivative. At what points are there going to be horizontal tangent lines? Notice this question is phrased a little bit differently from the other one. This time I want to know at what points are the horizontal tangent lines going to occur. So the point means that I want the x, y coordinate point. So horizontal tangent lines, that's when dy dx is going to be equal to 0. So in this case, when tangent is 0, or we can even just say when negative 2 sine t is going to be 0, or sine t is 0. So when does that occur? Sine t is 0 at every pi k. So remember to think your unit circle. Sine are the y values. So you have to be 0 pi, 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, and so on for every integer. So in order for us to represent the points, the points are all x, y points. And what do x and y represent? Well, x equals 2 negative 2 sine t, y equals to 2 cosine t. So if I have negative 2 sine pi k and I have 2 cosine pi k, what are the sine and cosine values at pi k? Well, all of the sine values are going to be 0. All the cosine values will either be plus 1 or minus 1. So our points are going to be 0 plus or minus 2. Okay, notice the difference in how I phrase the question. Here I asked what points they occur, and on the previous example I asked when they occur. 